In this video, I'll be showing you how to use Sparrow Bitcoin Wallet. First, I will create a standard single signature wallet with the recommended settings. Then I will show you how to receive Bitcoin and how to send Bitcoin. I will also show you all the best practices you can follow along the way. Let's move to the computer and get started. The first thing you need to do is download Sparrow Wallet if you have not already. So here I am in Firefox and I'm on sparrowwallet.com. You must ensure that you are on this link sparrowwallet.com. Then click on download at the top right of your screen and select Sparrow for whichever operating system you are on. I am on macOS with the M chip, so I click on this. Next, you have the option to verify your Sparrow Wallet download. I have a video on how you can do that. So watch that if you're interested in verifying Sparrow Wallet. Now that you have Sparrow Wallet downloaded onto your computer, you can go ahead and run that application. And this is the screen we are greeted with. Before we go ahead and create any wallets or use Sparrow, I want to talk about servers. What you want to do is click on Sparrow at the top left of your screen, then click on settings. And then over here, click on server. And we have three options for servers. If you do not run a Bitcoin node, you need to connect to this public server. That just means you're connecting to somebody else's Bitcoin node. And the problem with that is that they can see all your transaction history. Now, Sparrow automatically connects to nodes that are well trusted in the Bitcoin community and they do not keep logs. But if you are concerned about your privacy, you will need to connect through Bitcoin Core or a private Electrum server. If you want to run a Bitcoin node and connect it to Sparrow, I have a video on firstly, how to run Bitcoin Core and secondly, how to connect Bitcoin Core to Sparrow. I also have a video on how to run a start nine Bitcoin node, which will be this option, private Electrum. So I'm going to assume you're not running a node. So clicking public server is what we need to do. And here you have a few options of which one you wish to connect to. I like to use blockstream.info and click on test connection. And here we go, we can see I am connected to blockstream.info's node. And here it says no logs and Tor support. So they claim to not keep logs of our transaction history, but we can never verify that for sure. So I've connected to a server, I'm going to close this screen now, and we can go ahead and set up our first Sparrow wallet. To create a new wallet, we can either click on file at the top left of our screen, then click on new wallet. Or if I cancel this, we can simply just click new wallet on the screen here. So let me click on new wallet and we have the option to give it a name. For this video, I will just call it demo wallet and click on create wallet. Now we see this screen where we can adjust all the settings for this wallet. Firstly is the policy type. We want to keep this on single signature. Next is script type, and this is essentially which type of Bitcoin address do we wish to use. I suggest using native SegWit as you will save a lot on Bitcoin fees, and this is just the most widely used address at the moment. Now we can look over here under key stores. What we want to do is click on new or imported software wallet. Click on that, and then we want to generate uh, a seed phrase. So here I have the option to use 24 words, or I can click this little down arrow and select a different number of words. I like to use 12 words for Sparrow Wallet, but you're free to use 24 words if you wish. So I'm going to click on 12 words, and then I click on generate new to create my seed phrase. Now what you wanna do is write your seed phrase down. Just a reminder that this seed phrase backs up all your Bitcoin, it is the access to your coins. So write it down, keep it somewhere safe, keep it somewhere private, and do not let anybody else have your seed phrase, or they can steal the coins in this wallet. So I'm going to quickly write this seed down on a piece of paper. <coughs> all right, I've got a little piece of paper here with my seed phrase written down, and note that we have the option to use a passphrase. So if we hover over this, we can see this is an advanced feature which I will not cover in this video. If you do not understand passphrases, do not check this box, leave it off. And if you wish to delve into passphrases, I have another video on that, which I will link below. So I've written down the seed, I'm going to click on confirm backup. And now it says, do you have these 12 words written down? In this next step, you will need to re-enter them. I do, so I click on re-enter words. And now I need to list those words uh, to confirm that I've written them down correctly. I have gone ahead and re-entered those 12 words and here we can see I have a valid checksum. So this is a valid seed phrase. What I need to do now is click on create key store 
and then import key store over here. Now we will see this screen. You don't have to understand everything that's going on here, but I will point out a few key things. Firstly, we have a BIP39 wallet because our seed phrase is from the BIP39 word list. Secondly, we have a master fingerprint here, and this fingerprint is unique to our Bitcoin wallet. When you see this fingerprint, you know that it is this seed phrase that is behind this wallet. This is especially useful for when you are dealing with passphrases, but because we are not, you don't have to pay too much attention to that fingerprint. Just know that it, it is a unique identifier for this wallet. Finally, at the bottom here, we have our XPUB and our ZPUB. So if we switch here, we'll switch between our XPUB and our ZPUB. And this is the public key for our Bitcoin wallet. So when you're dealing with hardware wallets, you would export the public key to Sparrow and keep the private key on the device itself. So we don't need to take any action on the screen. It's just giving us information. And we can go ahead and click apply now at the bottom right of our screen. And we have the option to set a password. If you are securing some Bitcoin in this wallet, I suggest setting a pretty good password. I'm not going to set a good one. I'm just going to say demo, just like that. And retype that password demo and click on set password. And there we go. We now have a Sparrow wallet up and running. And we have a whole bunch of tabs here now to the left of our screen. At the top is transactions. This is where we will see all our transaction history. Here we have send. This is where we can build a send transaction. Receive will show you a Bitcoin address, which you can give a label and some other key information. We can click on addresses to see all of our Bitcoin addresses and our change addresses. Then we can click on UTXOs, which will list all of our UTXOs once we have some Bitcoin in this wallet. Now we can take a look at how to receive Bitcoin. It's pretty straightforward. Just click on receive over here and it will display a Bitcoin address for you. I highly recommend setting a label because this will help you in the future understand where this Bitcoin has come from. So for example, in my case, I might say demo Sparrow video. Now I can go ahead and send Bitcoin to this Bitcoin address. Note that I've set a label over here. And if I go to addresses, that label is set to this Bitcoin address. So what I'm going to do now is click on receive again, make this QR code nice and big, and I'm going to send a small amount of Bitcoin to the Sparrow wallet. Here I have built a transaction in Blue Wallet. I'm going to click on send now, and we should see that Bitcoin arrive shortly in my Sparrow wallet. Okay, at the top right of my screen, we have a new mempool transaction. And if I click on transactions at the top left of my screen, here we can see that Bitcoin has arrived in my address. One thing to note is that if I go back to receive, we can see it displays a new Bitcoin address now. And the reason for that is because you should never reuse Bitcoin addresses. You always use a new one for each transaction. So Sparrow by default feeds you a new one. And if I click on addresses, we can see the first one has been used. And now Sparrow will feed me this one if I click on receive. Now that we've received Bitcoin, we'll also have a new UTXO. If I click on UTXOs over here, here is that UTXO I just received. Here is the value in sats. Here is the label I set. This is my demo Sparrow video UTXO. Here's the address, the output, and uh, there would be a date if this transaction was confirmed. Now, if you don't really understand UTXOs, I highly, highly suggest looking into them because having lots of them can be terrible for your Bitcoin stack. I have a video on how to manage your UTXOs, explaining what they are, how to manage them, and how to reduce your fees in the future. Again, I highly suggest watching that video. It could save you a lot of money down the line if fees spike on Bitcoin's blockchain. Okay, so now that we've received Bitcoin, let's take a look at how to send Bitcoin. There are two different flows for sending Bitcoin. You can either click on send and then paste the address, set a label and the amount. But what I like to do is go to my UTXOs tab. This allows me to specifically select which UTXO I wish to spend before actually sending them. So for example, if I had multiple UTXOs at this point and I wanted to spend the demo Sparrow video one, I could simply click on it just like that, then click on send selected at the bottom right of my screen. Now it will only select and only spend that UTXO rather than randomly select them. So I think it's a good habit to have to click on UTXOs 
select the UTXOs you wish to spend and then click on send selected. Now in this screen, what we need to do is get a receiving address. Who do we wish to send the funds to? We'll set a label, a fee and so on. So let me go ahead and get a, an address to send funds to. So here is the Bitcoin address I wish to receive these funds to. What I'm going to do is open the camera in Sparrow and just scan on this QR code. That is done and here we can see the Bitcoin address has populated and I can see on my phone it matches. What we can do now is set a label. Again, I always recommend setting a label. So I'm going to say demo spend to blue wallet. Next, we can select an amount. Now that I've selected a UTXO specifically, it will default to the full value of that UTXO. To change that, simply type in a value like 10,000 sats. In my case, I wish to spend the whole thing, so I click on max over here. Now we can select a fee. At the moment, the fee is 10 sats per byte, and this is the amount of satoshis I will pay to spend that fee. Sparrow will automatically recommend a good fee for you, so I'm going to leave it as is, and um, we can move on to the next step. Over here at the bottom is our transaction flow. If we click on this, it will make it nice and big, and we can see we are spending that demo Sparrow video, we're spending from that address, or we're spending that UTXO, and we're sending this to my demo spend to Blue Wallet. That's the label I set. Over here is the fee which we will pay to the miner, and everything looks good here to me. So I click on close, and now I can click on create transaction over here. Finalize transaction for signing is what I click next, and then I go ahead and sign this transaction. It asks for my password, I fill in demo, just like that, and I click on unlock, and now this transaction is signed. But this transaction has not been broadcast to the network yet. It's simply a signed transaction. To go ahead and broadcast that, I click on broadcast transaction, and now that has been propagated to the Bitcoin network, and at the top right of my screen, we see new mempool transaction with the sats gone now. So what I can do now is click on this little arrow pointing up next to the transaction ID to open this in a mempool explorer. So I click on that. And here it opens mempool.space with my transaction ID over there. And here is my transaction on the blockchain. We can see it's projected to be in this next Bitcoin block. And here are all the details. We have one input, one output. We paid a minor fee over here. That is the minor fee and so on. I'm not going to dive too deep on mempool. I will make a video on that soon. So I'm going to close this and I can also close this little tab here, demo spend to blue to open my wallet over here. If we click on our transactions at the top left, we can see that transaction left my wallet. Here was the incoming and here is the outgoing. And if we click on UTXOs, I have no more UTXOs because I just spent it and sent it elsewhere. And there we go, that is how to use Sparrow Bitcoin Wallet. If you need help with anything Bitcoin, like setting up a hardware wallet, setting up Sparrow Wallet, or running a Bitcoin node, I offer one-on-one -on -one services where I will guide you through it all. Go to secusats.com for more information, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, everyone.